good Friday morning, a feel-good football Friday. What will we get on Sunday? The Giants and the Dolphins, the biggest spread on the board this week. The Giants, the biggest underdog in the league with how poorly they have played. That is no surprise going up against this Miami Dolphins team that for much of the season has been right up there as the talk of the league. And, of course, the Jets and Broncos, a game that was talked about during hard knocks, during the preseason where the Sean Payton-Nate Hackett thing was going to drive the conversation. Well, we've forgotten about that. And now it's all about Russell Wilson, how he's going to play. Of course, Zach Wilson, how he is going to play. Can the Jets somehow get back into this conversation for a wild card? And Zach build off of that Chiefs performance. And of course... The Mets are not done with their awkward, weird, silly offseason. As Billy Epler yesterday resigns amid controversy. It's going to be a good one today. Good morning, Boomer. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing well, G. And uh, yes, the Mets are uh, a cleaning house, uh, as they say. And Billy Epler is also being investigated by MLB for improperly using the injured list. Whatever he did there, I have no idea and really don't care. All I know is that David Stearns now has a clean, clean slate. I mean, he can do whatever he wants. It's uh, He's not going to be impeded by anybody, and usually that's what happens when somebody new from outside an organization comes in. They're the ones that now all of a sudden start to determine whether or not they want to keep people around, and usually it's not a good idea to do that. Now, if you're a person within an organization that gets elevated into a spot, uh, you may change some things, but for the most part, you may have a working relationship with people that you really like and you want to keep it the way it is. Uh, But when you come from out of town and you come from a completely different place, uh, to me, it makes a lot of sense that it's going to be a a ton of sense that it's going to be uh, a clean slate for whoever comes in here and and is a part of the, the GM slash, I guess, collaborative baseball operations person. So uh, you know, I, I don't really worry about it too much. I mean, really, we'll start to see what David Stearns does here in the next month and a half or so, and then we'll get a feel yeah. for what's going to happen. I mean, I think that the the biggest concern, though, is that Steve Cohen has been miserable with hiring these guys since he got here. And every Met fan doesn't want to believe that his tenure here has been bad because of what they came through with the Wilpons and how excited they were that Steve Cohen was the owner. And no, I don't think it's the Wilpons all over again. He's going to use his resources, and this David Stearns hire has been applauded by the rest of baseball. But you had Jared Porter, who turned out to be a pervert that he hired as a GM. Then you had Zach Scott, who had his issues with the drunk driving arrest. He ended up getting out of that, but he still was fired for it. And I don't know what he's doing now. Then you got Billy Epler, who comes in here and say what you want about 101 win season. But Billy Epler comes in here and these big trade deadline acquisitions were Darren Ruff and Daniel Vogel back. And now he is amid controversy by stashing healthy players on the injured list so he can gain a competitive advantage and then resigns. I mean, Steve Cohen's hires for GM since he's gotten here have been disastrous. So this David Stearns hire better be the best one, and everybody believes it's going to be. But, you know, everybody that 101-win season is the bright, shiny object that's been up there with the Steve Cohen tenure. And it, and that season ended horribly, and the rest of the Steve Cohen tenure has been as bad as any Mets stretch that we've seen. You know, it does answer one very uh, important question, however. We kind of understand now why Steve Cohen looked the way he did at the press conference announcing David Cerns, the, the disheveled owner of the the Mets, looks like he's already worn out and he's only been here for like what uh, you know half a minute. It feels like so. Um, all I can tell you is that this reminds me, and it is reminiscent reminiscent of some of the Nick disasters over the last twenty years. Some of the people that were hired and fired and replaced and brought in and fired again and spent. So we all know that Jim Dolan will spend as much money as humanly possible to try to bring a championship to New York. But for whatever reason, he's been unable to do that. And maybe now, over the last three to four years, it's, it feels like the Knicks are stable, although they haven't been able to acquire you know, anybody of major significance other than Jalen Brunson, Brunson and, and, Je- um, and Josh Hart. And what that feels like, and Hartenstein, by the way, and what that kind of feels like, it kind of feels like, you know, you're you're in the – you know, you're in the um, – what's the word I'm looking for? You're in the aisle in the store where they put all the stuff that is 
kind of expiring, and they're and it's on sale. Sure. Yep. You know what I mean? The I, the, uh, the bargain rack. Right. They haven't will. been able to get the Damian Lillard of the world, the Jimmy Butlers of the world. They haven't been able to get anybody of that ilk. Now, Jalen Brunson is a terrific uh, player. We all love him. We all love Josh Hart. We're, we're happy that he got his contract extension. But they can't get anybody of significance. Their they're significant player is Julius Randle. And maybe R.J. Barrett, if he can learn how to shoot better. From well, Jalen three. Brunson, yes. but I know. Well, Jalen Brunson, of course. But I, it's just I feel like that's where the Mets are right now. They're kind of like in that like Nick – you know, abyss that the Knicks were in for so long where they just kept hiring and firing people that were running the organization. And maybe the Knicks, like I said, have, sta- uh, have stabilized now. Maybe this David Stern's character is going to be able to stabilize the Mets. Yeah. That's I, what you got to hope for well, if you're of a course, Met fan. Of course. And maybe the failures prior to the David Stern's hire might end up being a blessing in disguise because it meant that you ended up getting David Stern's. And that's what Met fans have to hope for and wish for. But I mean, this has been a really rough stretch. I mean, if you remember, of course, the season prior to the good season in 2022, how much drama was around that with the Jacob deGrom injury and the thumbs down. I mean, they traded um, for Javi Baez and gave up Pete Crow Armstrong, who is a uh, top-level prospect now, who everybody is very excited about. It's just, I mean, the Carlos Beltran thing <laughs> prior to that, hired and fired. I mean, that was before Steve Cohen got there. But it's just, I mean... Wow. And then you had Billy Epler and Buck Showalter. Those were going to be the guys that brought Steve Cohen into the winning world. And they're both gone already. So, I mean, Steve Cohen's first foray into this as the man who was going to bring Shangri-La to the Met fans has been horrible. And none of the Met fans want to believe it because they were so excited about him being the owner. So it doesn't mean that the future is bleak. The future could still be very, very positive. But up until this point, you are kidding yourself if you're saying that the Steve Cohen tenure has been a good tenure. It, it is. No. I mean, the fact that these guys are gone already, I mean, it's it's amazing. It, it truly is. It's been twisted. It's been dysfunctional. It has been all the things that uh, we were or they were before this this guy actually fully took over. Now, he'll spend a lot of money. Just goes to show you, you better have the right people spending the right money on the right players. And if you have that, then you have the Atlanta Braves. And you have yeah. stability. And you don't have all this nonsense going on around the organization. I mean, like, what was the last time that uh, that organization had any sort of, sort of scandal? Uh, Marcelo Zuna got arrested for DUI last year. Yeah, but that that's a player that goes off the rails here or there. I, yeah, I mean that could happen for any team, any sport. Young guys with money are going to make bad decisions. Yeah, I mean that's the only thing that popped I'm in my mind. I'm talking right about away. like their front office, their managerial situation. No. You know, they, they and John they, Sherholtz was there for years. They and, lose Freddie Freeman. They bring in Matt Olson. Yeah, you know? no, no, they've been great. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean that that's what you want. That's what you're aspiring to. You're aspiring to having uh, you know the right players. Uh, the right manager, um, no controversy whatsoever. Guys aren't hurt. Guys aren't a part of deep dives into the, uh, you know, into the organization to help you know create a better or what? Yeah, I like, mean, it's just that it's, really if you if you really break it down, these GMs that have been here, one guy fired, penis picks to a reporter. Second guy fired, arrested for DUI. Third guy resigns after miserable season amidst a. MLB investigation into cheating. <laughs> like, what? Does anybody have that track record? Who's got that track record it's, out there? It's unbelievable. With hiring in Major League Baseball. Oh. I mean, this and this is this is only from like 2021 to now. I know. I know. It's unbelievable. I mean, it's crazy. It is. And I, I just and and we, now you have multiple managers. This will be the third manager, and the fourth GM, well, I mean, if you want to say Stearns is a GM, the third manager and the fourth well, GM even since, Steve, da- since Steve Cohen bought the team. Even if even if David Stearns isn't labeled as the GM. He's the guy get, making the decision. They'll, they'll, but there'll be another GM in there. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, either way, you're going to have another GM. Exactly. You're exactly right. Revolving door. I mean, they just, they are I just, mean, it is, the it is. How does, how does points, ask, what's, it, what's that? Point assets management? Yeah, yeah. How the hell do they make any money? 
Well, I mean, he's good at that. Well, I Apparently. somebody's good at that. I don't know, man. Yeah, I mean, Jesus, God, well, he's not, this he's is not, unbelievable. He's not, he's not good it's at this. It's a turnstile over there at City Field. This ownership thing. Yeah, I mean, I mean now. Don't, doesn't it feel like the Knicks? It it does, but in a short, you know, in a condensed amount of time. Because you really do need to separate Will Ponds and Cohen, even though it seems like it's just continued to move in that direction. But... But, yeah, really bad hires, disappointing seasons. Really the most stable time was with Omar Minaya, and he was fun. He yeah. put some teams together. I yeah. mean, you know, he knew what the hell he was doing. Sure. I mean, and, you know, you could say that, you know, Sandy at times provided some stability for them. But but this is this has to be the stability. This has to be it. This David Stern's hire cannot fall flat. He cannot be resigning amid controversy like Billy Epler. He cannot be arrested or investigated. This has to be it. He's got to be the guy. He has to be our Theo Epstein. That's what he needs to be. And he's getting paid big bucks. I think he's probably the highest paid executive in baseball I was reading, or at least on par with the highest paid in the games. He grew up a Mets fan. He's talking a big game. I mean, this is it. This is the guy that Steve Cohen waited for. I mean, we've been hearing that he wanted to hire a president of baseball operations for the last two years. He's been waiting for him. So let's see it. Prove us wrong. You know, and I guess uh, Council's going to come in as the manager because he's got to wait and see with that one. But it seems like that's going to be uh, what, what's going to happen is those two reunite. You would and like to think that that would be some some sort of stability if, if, in fact, that was the case. I can't imagine him hiring somebody that he doesn't have any tie to. Yeah, right. And you got Pete Alonzo hiring Scott Boris. It just it really is amazing what a difference a, a year can make. From, you know, the getting knocked out of the playoffs, but still everybody going, oh, we've got such a bright future, this and that, to this miserable season where you see three other teams in your division in the postseason. And you're sitting here kicking guys out, bucking Billy Epler, gone, gone. I mean, think about the beginning of this season and what we were talking about of the future of this team. And now both the GM... And the manager are gone. Verlander's gone. Scherzer is gone. And by the way, Carlos Correa is out there hitting, you know, making plays. I understand he had a bad season, but still in the playoffs, he's kicking ass like he always does. Well, he's in the playoffs because they were in a crappy division. Still, though, but they won won the series, and he was a big part of it. But the Mets are in one of the toughest divisions in baseball. You know that. Well, they, they, okay, well, they should be one of the reasons why they're tough, but they're not. Well, you spent $350 million on your team. You'd like to think that. I haven't even mentioned that part. You spent it on Drek. Right. I mean, I haven't even mentioned that part of the Steve Cohen disaster. Max Scherzer, Justin Verlander, wow. I mean, <laughs> you don't even get a half a season out of Verlander. Plus, you're still paying their salaries. And by the way, Max Scherzer, what a loser. Did you see the pictures of him celebrating with his shirt off with the Rangers? No, I didn't in no. the In the clubhouse? What no. did you do to contribute to that team's success? Nothing. You're shut down for the year. You made a handful of starts there. You're done, and you got the goggles and your shirt off getting champagne squirted all over you? What? If I'm him, I just stand back with my arms crossed, smile on the face, happy for those guys. You don't get in the middle of that celebration. You did nothing to that team. You're done. So I I just, I don't know. I, I want to be positive about this team. But then again, we've been told that next year, you know, they're going to be, you know, more money conscious. It's not going to be a star laden of a team. David Stern says, you know, we're going to really try to rebuild this organization while having a competitive 2024 and the only tie to Shohei Otani who I understand he's hurt but this is the biggest free agent in the history of the game the only tie that the Mets had to that just resigned yesterday well the uh the biggest question for me is will Pete Alonso be moved in the offseason or will he be given a contract extension or will he have to play it out much like Aaron Judge played it out that 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 would be the biggest question. Yeah, I I and I can't. I have no idea what David Stearns thinks about Pete Alonso, but I have a bad feeling that they're going to trade him. I have a bad feeling about that. I especially when you get the new guy comes in, and I understand. But look, we're going to pay Pete at thirty something years old. You know, f- close to forty million a year. What are we crazy? We hey. can trade him, get a bunch of prospects. We're in a rebuilding mode. We thank him for his time. We'll give him a nice video when he comes back. I just, I want him to stay. I think he should stay, and I want him to retire a Met. But I, I got a bad feeling that Mister Dweeb is going to roll right in Mr. here, Mister Dweeb. And he's, he's, how about the analytics train that's coming in with him? Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, that that's really what it comes down to. I think. Right. I think you know. 
uh, assessing a player's future value and looking at, you know, what he has done. You know, the only reason Pete gets hurt, it's not because he pulls a muscle or any of that crap. It's because he gets hit with the baseball. Yeah. You know, I mean, he's pretty much been an Iron Man since he's been here. I mean, there's got to be a reason why these contract negotiations have stalled. And they were talking in the offseason. But and I think the reason why is Steve Cohen was waiting for David Stearns to be the president, and he's going to let David Stearns make that big decision. You know, since, what, 2021, I just saw a graphic. You know, Pete Alonso has almost 350 home runs in the National League, and that leads everybody by far. The closest one to him is Nolan Arenado at 301. Yeah. He's got 343 home runs. Isn't baseball about the home run? Uh, it is for some people, yes. Well, it has been it, for the Yankees, and that hasn't really worked out for them. No, well, it worked out for Aaron Judge, though. Yeah, it certainly did with the it's, money he got weird, paid. It's a weird deal, man. It's a really weird, strange situation going on with the Mets right now. Maybe this but guy what is in. it not? I know, I know. I, well, we all, thought it, we all thought maybe four this, years ago it was not. I mean, God. It's just, I mean, and I don't want to do the Joe Beningo. You could change the practice, so you could change the unit. But that's what it is, man. There's just like there's... They stink on these organizations, and and sometimes it ta- you know it takes that one, for lack of a better term, you know baseball hero to come in and change things. And Theo Epstein did it in two places, and the Mets hope they got that guy. Well, the question really comes down to you know, so he's basically the GM's gone, the manager's gone. So the next big hire will most likely be the manager, at least that we'll all see. I mean. He'll hire somebody as a GM that's probably somebody in his background that he knows that may be an assistant GM with, I don't know, with Milwaukee or something like that, and we won't even probably recognize the person who it is. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the manager is who we will all recognize, and then we'll know which basic direction he's going in. And the one thing I would warn whoever the manager is, if it is Greg Council or anybody else, like, you know, you're coming to New York. This is the Mets. you got to know what you're stepping into. You better know what you're stepping into. It's like I would say to anybody else, like you, you're coming to the Jets, you better know what you're stepping into. Yeah, uh, of course. And and people could downplay the whole New York thing, and I do think that this day and age it's not as big of a deal as it was maybe 20, 30 years ago with the social media age. But it's still, I mean, you, you could come here and just be nuked immediately. And we've seen, we've seen it over and over and over again. Yeah, and it's and what happens is is you you got to have extremely thick skin. You got to have a hell of a backbone, and you got to be able to take it. And you know some some guys can, some guys can't. Um, I, I think that there are guys that try to fight back. I think of Dave Gettleman. You know when he came in, yeah. I think of a guy trying to be like totally force forward. You know, like I'm I'm setting a narrative. I'm telling you what's going on, and I don't give a crap what you write about me. And I what did he last four or five years. Yeah, he did, and I, I just, I, I, I hope that we are looking at this off season as a positive, because my biggest fear is that the Met fan is going to be disgusted by the strip down of this thing. Because you hear clean slate, right? Clean slate with the manager and the GM. Does that mean clean slate with all the players too? Does that mean Pete well, Alonso's gone? Does that mean you know? I mean, you're you're having a guy come in. Now, we don't know much about outside of what we've read and what he's done with the Brewers and fine. He's come in, already the manager's gone, already a guy, Billy Epler, who said he was excited working with him is gone. What else is going to happen? I mean, how much is this thing going to get stripped down in this offseason? What team are we going to get? I mean, are we going to be the, hey, it's a bunch of kids this year and we saved some money and we're under the luxury tax and... Let's go out there, and it'll be like you know Ronnie Mauricio bobblehead day is the only reason why you want to go to City Field. Is that what we're going to get? Or are they really going to try to win next year? And that that's my biggest fear. Are we going to be taking calls all off season like this? David starts fire him now. How do you trade <laughs> Pete Alonso? How do you do this? How do you do that? I don't know what this guy's going to do. You know that that one right there. The the Pete Alonso situation is going to be a minefield for him. Yeah, it's going to be a minefield. And you know, don't think that Pete Alonso and Scott Boris don't realize that. Don't uh, believe this. Yeah. Everybody knows who the most popular Met is. It's not even close. Oh, yeah, of course. Not even close. Uh, all right, we have plenty of football to get to on this Feel Good Friday. Feel Good Football Friday.